moving ahead now we'll see how you know ITs are different for these three sets so there is a resource constraints next is the communications and next is change management so resource constraints for IT systems are specified with enough resources to support the addition of third-party applications such as security solutions so whenever we size these systems these are designed with enough resources in terms of the hard disk ram cpu uh, in terms of ot systems are designed to support the intended industrial process and may not have enough memory or compute resources to support the addition of security capabilities so ot resources if you see uh, any plc or any hmi or workstation it will have a limited uh, ram it will not have infinite uh, ram or you'll find barely 16 gb 32 gb or on the servers nowadays we are offering 64 gbs also and 128 gbs also but if you see earlier like go back to the five year or eight year or, uh, or even 10 years you'll find all the systems have two to four gb rams maximum eight gb rams and also hard disks are also restricted and uh, nowadays uh, it systems they can quickly upgrade from um, their hard disk to sdd and they can put a very high amount of ram they can even replace the servers but replacement and all these things all these things are very cumbersome in the ot because due to the downtime required for the plant and uh, we cannot plan uh, uh, every update and upgrade very 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 quickly so systems whatever was designed earlier or even now it is getting designed to support the intended digital process so if all the applications whatever we are loading on that's missing if those are getting run and even we have uh, like 60 or 50 to 60 percent loading on the machine and it's still spare 40 percent is there then that's okay we we go ahead with that but that is getting a bottleneck if we start applying the cyber security applications on the same system those need uh, more resources and that can uh, cause a resource crunch as well moving ahead communications so standard communication protocols basically in it you will never find uh, something other than tcp ip or uh, proper communication protocol as a proper communication protocol primarily uh, wide networks with some localized wireless capabilities also so in it we use uh, maybe wireless capabilities for office uh, wireless as well as to transmit data from one place to another next we often use uh, internet quite on a larger scale than typical IT networking practice we use in IT. In OT many proprietary and standard communication protocols are there so I can list because I am from OT background so I can list your protocols like starting from Ether IP is there then Modbus is there then uh, you know, Profibus, Profinet, uh, we have uh, OPC protocols, we have uh, uh, 62 uh, 61850 60870 protocols dnp protocols there are uh, several serial communication protocols there are uh, some based on the ethernet protocols are also available so the data from the packet the composition of the traffic is totally different from one protocol to another protocol it's not similar so if you see the datagram of that protocol of any two protocols of the OT communication you'll find a different uh, data packet and different type of uh, data and different way of communicating different way of carrying the payload from one point to another point so those all depends on the, the proprietary OEMs like uh, what Siemens follows what Yokogawa follows what Rockwell follows so these types of proprietary protocols you will uh, find in a uh, plant multiple multiple types of protocol you will find in plant scenario then we have several types of communication media also used including dedicated wire and wireless radio set even even if there is a cable communication not all are the rj45 connections it could be rs232 connection two wire communications it could be a four wire communication so if a rtd is connected it's a, it could be two wire three wire four wire communication from field to io card then if it is a network communication profibus uh, works on the two wire or three wire uh, communication then if it is a profinet then it looks like a ethernet cable but the protocol is totally different then modbus also it could be on a two-wire communication or or it, uh, if modbus tcp is there then it works on a uh, ethernet type of cable we can use but eventually the k that needs a converter in between and we can con convert those ethernet from the ethernet devices uh, you know, from modbus devices to converter which converts that modbus to modbus tcp then then we can add into the switch and then 
we can uh, read it through our softwares. Complex networks that sometimes require the expertise of control engineers. So networks are quite complex. You'll find a star topology somewhere in the plant. You will also find a ring topology in some places. We can find uh, uh, multiple the mesh uh, topology. So let us suppose take example of the Foxboro DCS. So they have the mesh network at the at the lower level where uh, the field level and the, just L1 I can say. So at that level there is a mesh topology for high high availability. Then if we go above there is a star topology. So multi topologies also changes as per the requirement of the availability and redundancy. Then uh, moving to the uh, next topic is the change management. So software changes are applied in a timely fashion in the presence of good security policy and procedures. So software changes are applied in a timely fashion. So there is a regularity here that we, we need to apply the software changes whenever it is available. Uh, it could be weekly, it could be monthly, and but, but it is quite more often as compared to the OT industry. The procedures are often automated, so uh, there is no need to manual intervention. So laptops now, if you see our laptops, we get, it gets quick update from the servers. It gets automatically updated and then it automatically starts as well. But in if we go to OT, so software changes must be thoroughly tested for prior to implement. So in IT also it is uh, there that we need to uh, test it prior to implementation. But sometimes we directly get uh, KBs from Microsoft and we directly implement it on system. So that is another thing. But software changes must be thoroughly tested and deployed incrementally throughout the system to ensure that integrity of the OT system is maintained. So we cannot just, uh, if some vulnerability is found and we get a patch, we just, we can go for implementation quickly. No, we need to just test it, whether the prior to implementation and after the implementation, whether the behavior of the system is same. It should be tested in a lab and must be released by the OEM. Then only the plant owners or the asset owners, they can vouch on that and they can implement it in, on their own system. So OT outages often must be planned and scheduled. So we already talked this topic more again and again and multiple times. So any type of shutdown or maintenance activity, we need to plan it and we need to execute it in the plan duration only. So OT may uses operating systems that are no longer supported. Also, it is also possible that because these systems are designed 15 years back also. So some systems you will find is still running on Windows XP or Windows 7 or Windows 8, Windows 10. So might be... Uh, might be those systems are not supported by the Microsoft or if there is a, some application software also by the OEMs and they are end of life and they are not supported by even some switches from Cisco or Hutchman or Moksha is there and they are end of life and not more supported by the OEMs but still they are in use in the plants. So basically we, if, if something is already end of life we cannot implement a patch on those systems because uh, no longer the patch are being released by the OEMs. So I uh, hope I think uh, with these three uh, uh, sessions on the same topic, uh, we understood what is the basic difference between IT and OT. And if someone asks you, you, you have a plethora of terms, you have a good comparison between the OT and IT systems, and you can explain it in a very, very professional way. And uh, I think you learned how, what is the basic difference between OT and IT. So let's move to the next topic. Till then, thank you. Bye.